Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Madisonville Marine. The most important aspect of boat buying isn't price and it isn't customer service. Both of those are very important, of course, but tops on the list, finding the right boat for you and your family. If you aren't happy with your choice, what's the point? Get the boat you want, get the boat you need. When you do that, you're gonna get the most out of that boat when you're enjoying it out on the lakes. The selection at Madisonville Marine allows you to compare and contrast all kinds of makes and models with just one team. The folks at Madisonville Marine, they can sit there and talk to you about the bass boat versus the deck boat, the pontoon boat versus the outdoors, the, uh, the outdoorsman's boat, like a, the, the G3 Sportsman Series, for example. Madisonville Marine, they carry more boats. They're the best place to start. There's no better place to buy a boat, you might say, and I have for many years. Madisonville Marine. Ryan Callahan, you cover recruiting for GoVols247.com, among other things. Uh, let me start with you. Uh, Will Albright, D. Beckwith, and Tyler Barron all hit the transfer portal out of town. Tyler Barron, it was a revolving door because within 24 hours, he just spun back around and stayed. And then yesterday, uh, Tennessee lands a receiver, six foot two receiver from Wyoming, 44 catches, 872 yards, 12 touchdowns this past year. Tell us about Isaiah Nair. I, I really like this pickup for Tennessee, and we, we rank uh, transfer 24-7 sports, so he's ranked the number 22 overall transfer in this class and the number four transfer wide receiver. So this is a coveted guy, LSU, USC, Texas, among the other schools that offered. Um, Texas and USC were the main competition in the end. Uh, you, he actually he says he's 6'3". I haven't seen him in person to, to vouch for that. That's what he's listed as at 6'3", 210, and he claims to have run a 4'3", in the 40. Can't vouch for that either, but regardless, it's a big guy with speed. There's a lot to like, and he put up a lot of production. Incredible stats uh, that, his, that he put up in relation to Wyoming's passing offense this past year. He had 12 of Wyoming's 15 touchdown catches. He also averaged nearly 20 yards per catch, ranked top 10 in the country in both of those categories. So this is a huge pickup for Tennessee. Uh, I know people might be looking at the Music City Bowl and thinking they need a defense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they saw some needs on offense too, and one of them was receiver with losing Bayless Jones Jr. and J Javante Payton. Yeah. Filling in one of those spots with a guy like this, th this makes Tennessee's offense maybe even better if Nayer lives up to expectations. He was a two-star coming out of high school. Too. He was, was yes. There's a, there's a fun back story to that. Yeah. Do we close the Tyler, do we close the transfer portal on Tyler Barron, or do we still have concerns that he may turn around and say, I'm out of here after all? I, I think he stays. I, I don't have any reason right now to think that he's likely to leave. I think it's mostly been uh, been resolved. Well, it's, it's one of those things where clearly there was some discomfort there. His father was on staff, no longer is there. And I think some more serious conversations, things kind of sped up quickly and, and things that probably needed to be discussed were discussed once he, he entered the transfer portal because I think there was some uncertainty as to whether he would actually leave. Once things get that serious, it tends to make the conversations more serious quickly and Tennessee made it, uh, uh, made it feel comfortable for him and, and it's, it's a better situation now. So I think they're, they're in a better spot there and I'll be surprised if he leaves, but hey, it's a transfer portal area, so you never say never. <laughs> Tennessee has added 20 bodies. They wound up with the number 14 class in the country according to 24-7 uh, sports. Down to 15 now, Down to 15 yeah. in your guys' ratings? Okay. Well, I knew that <laughs> I would spot. suck. Well, teams <laughs> are still adding guys, yeah. so that's the... All right, so you, we've got to February. Mm -hmm. What should all fans be aware of in terms of where this class is going? Transfer portal, recruiting, what are you looking for? How much is that ranking going to change between now and February? Uh, so that ranking, uh, now transfers, we have three different rankings. For what it's worth, the transfer edition does not impact the, the, uh, that traditional team ranking you mentioned there. But regardless, they're, they're looking to add at least a, a handful of guys, mostly, I think, in the transfer portal. They're looking at a couple of high school defensive linemen. Ahmad Moten from South Florida will visit uh, Tennessee next weekend. Uh, they've got another defensive line target, Jason Jenkins from New Jersey, who uh, is, is likely to visit at the end of January. And then uh, also just offered a safety from Alabama recently, Miguel Mitchell. Uh, that has uh, has some other big programs chasing him now. So at least a few names out there to watch leading up to National Sign Day in February. But otherwise, it's going to be, I think, all focus on the transfer portal. They're, they're after a running back that, that was a Wake Forest, Christian Beal Smith. Um, do, they, do they go after anyone else that can enroll in January, or does it all shift to waiting to see what's out there after spring practice when there will obviously be more names, as we saw pretty much everyone, aside from Hennon Hooker that Tennessee added last year, was a spring transfer portal addition. Tennessee did not uh, self-impose a bowl ban this year. Do we expect them to self-impose scholarship limitations? Anyone? Anyone? I, I, I do. I, I do too. Yeah. I, um, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I 
don't know what the exact number is going to be, but we're hearing five-ish maybe in mm -hmm. some form or fashion is how this impacts the recruiting class. The question is, do they take it off the, the 85 or do they take it off the size of the recruiting class? We don't know that, but I th I've been led to believe the end result is this class ends up being around 27 as opposed to 32, which is what the number would be because of the the seven extra spots essentially that teams are being given if they lose seven transfers. I think I'd take it off the 85 if it were me because you can bring you can you can pick guys and bring them in and then pick guys that you want to go away. Uh, yeah, which is harsh, but that's how the game mm -hmm. is played. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, you yeah. agree with those numbers, or do you want to tell? Uh, no, Ryan I do. Is wrong? I, I was going to say I thought that they would. <laughs> that, that was about the number that I think it would be around five and. Uh, and as far as the bowl ban, I think Tennessee is going to force the NCAA to impose the bowl ban. I don't think Tennessee's going to do it. Yeah. Well, at this point, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't think they would self-impose. Yeah, you've one waited year this two. long. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that's the question to this whole thing too. Does the NCAA accept the penalties Tennessee yeah. is putting out there, or do, is there more tacked on a couple of years down the road, or whenever this? Or do your legal fees go up to one and a half million instead of just yeah. one million if you're Tennessee? Yeah. That's Crazy. ridiculous. Crazy. That's All my right. statement. <laughs> you sticking to it? I'm right. sticking to it. All right. All right. When we come back, Georgia and Alabama battle for the national championship tomorrow night. What might the fallout mean or be for Tennessee? Is Tennessee even close enough in terms of the program to worry about who wins? We'll discuss that. Come on back. <laughs> 